Hello and welcome to this video on the residual operating income model. The residual operating income model is also known as the discounted abnormal operating earnings model and I'm going to talk a little bit about what this model is and how it's used to value a business. So the residual operating income model formula is presented here and it says to value the firm's assets it's equal to net operating assets NOA in the current period or time period zero. So we'd get that straight from a reformatted balance sheet, net operating assets, plus our NOPAT in time period one, so one year into the future, or NOPAT forecast, net operating profits after tax. That'd be straight from our reformatted forecast, minus the cost of capital for the firm. So RF is the cost of capital for the firm, times net operating assets in time period zero. This term up here is called the residual operating income. It is very similar to the residual income model. So if you've heard of the residual income model, the residual operating income model is a very similar approach to value in a business. However, there is a few key differences. First of all, you'll see that this formula values the firm's assets. It uses the cost of capital for the whole firm, and it uses operating assets and operating profits to measure the performance of the business. The operating income model uses a firm's operating income or operating profits and their operating assets. The residual income model just uses the net profit. It use, values the firm's equity using the net profit and owner's equity. The operating income model values the overall firm using the operating assets, operating profit and cost of capital for the firm. Okay, otherwise relatively similar application of these two valuation models with similar advantages and disadvantages. So to reiterate, the residual income model values a firm's equity. The residual operating income model values the firm's assets. Okay, so overall firm returns versus equity returns. Remember, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So this model is valuing just the equity. This model is valuing the assets. So they use the cost of capital for the firm, which is assets and debt cost of capitals versus cost of capital for just the equity. The models can be reconciled. The residual income model is valuing the firm's equity, but the residual operating income model is valuing the firm's assets. But if we minus off the debt, we still get the value of the equity. So the models can be reconciled together. So this slide here presents just some of the similarities between these two models. We can evaluate the performance of a firm looking at their operating profits and operating assets. So when we talked about reformatting, we learned about the value of understanding a business's operations versus their financing activities. So this model takes into account the operating performance of the business. It says the residual operating income is equal to a firm's NOPAT minus the cost of firm capital times the prior net operating assets. However, we also know that if we didn't do our reformatting process, we were just going to be lose, using a normal net profit and equity figure, we could apply that and would have the residual income model. Okay, so they're very similar. This model is just focusing on those operating profits and operating assets instead of overall profit and overall equity in the business. We've got a little bit of algebra here just showing how the residual operating income model can be broken down um, into its various components. And finally, these two models, they're separate valuation models. Their approach is slightly different. But if you get advanced at this kind of thing, if you adjust the cost of equity capital each year, you'll get the same valuation output under both models. Now, as we do it for our assignments, it might not happen for us, but we'll talk about in a future topic how we can make these valuation models reconcile together. So the residual operating income model is a very similar process to apply as the residual income model. However, the key differences, just to reiterate, we're valuing the firm. So that means if you want to calculate a firm's share price after you've applied this model, you've valued the assets of the firm, you then minus off the firm's net financial obligations or the debt to get the value of equity. Otherwise, it's the same process of applying. You get your NOA and NOPAT figures from your forecast template. You'll get your cost of capital for the firm using a weighted average cost of capital. And we apply the formula in a very similar way using a very similar setup. What are the advantages of this model? It focuses on the operations of the business rather than the combined operating and financing activities. So hopefully that might allow us to improve our forecasting because when we're forecasting our operations, we should have a better understanding of the business 
rather than if we're trying to forecast everything together. And that's done when we've used our forecasting template approach. Check out the demonstration video on the residual operating income model to see it in practice and you'll be able to see the slight differences. Between Thank you.